All right, as we uh, begin our next lecture and we look at, uh, as we continue to look at and try to provide a background of cattle operations here in Texas, before we get into our specific uh, areas like reproduction and genetics and so on, I want to spend a little bit of time to, to kind of give you an overview of just some, some of the uh, demographics of U.S. cow-calf operations and then give you some examples of some cattle operations uh, here in Texas and across the United States. If you look at uh, beef cattle operations by size here in the United States, uh, a lot of times they think, uh, folks think, especially here in Texas, that all the ranches are, are you know, hundreds if not thousands of head of cattle. Uh, but in reality, we're looking at an average herd size of somewhere around between 35 and 40 uh, cows. And so it's still a relatively a small uh, producer uh, as far as our demographics. And if you look at cow-calf operations by size, the majority of them, and here in the U.S. looking at 2012 numbers, there are about 583,000 uh, uh, operations with less than 50 cows. Uh, as we look at 2011 and 2010 actual uh, data there. Uh, if you look at those operations with 50 to 99 head, uh, they're going to look at 81,000, 64,000, 100 to 499 head. And then we get into uh, smaller percentages and numbers as we get uh, into those larger operations. So it's pr predominantly uh, small cow-calf operations. Uh, if you look at uh, operations by size group and, and as far as um, percent of the inventory, uh, and it breaks out as essentially about 90% of the operations are going to produce about 50% of the cattle. And then the other 10% of the operations are going to produce the remaining balance. And so as we look at it, those operations that uh, are in that, that 50 to 99 and less than uh, 50 head of cows, uh, they're going to be producing somewhere around, they're going to be about 45% of the operation, or they're going to be about 90% of the operations and produce about 45% uh, of the cattle. And so it is, again, uh, a lot of small producers make an impact on our beef industry. Specifically, if we look at in Texas, and it, it pretty much mirrors the, the national data as well, but 86% of the operations have less than 50 cows. Uh, about 8% have 50 to 99 cows. And if you add those numbers up, uh, you're looking at somewhere around 50% of the inventory is produced by a little over 90% of the operations. And then the balance, about another 6% of the operations produce the remaining 50%. Uh, and so in Texas, there's about 4.3 million beef cows that calved. And they, our average is around 32 cows per herd. And so Again, we're a very small, if you look at the demographics, the majority of our uh, producers are going to have uh, small numbers of cattle, and they're going to be, most of them are going to be part-time operators. Maybe they're retired, uh, maybe they have come back uh, to the ranching, and, and they, they've got a real job in the city, and they're going to use this as uh, something they enjoy to do, but also make some additional revenue as well uh, with that. So again, Majority of the U.S. cattle operations, they're going to be operated by part-time ranchers. And again, they count for about 50% of the cash produced. Uh, and less than 10% of our operators here in the U.S. would be considered full-time. And if we think about our full-time operators, you're probably going to have to have somewhere in that three to 500 cows minimum to be able to support a family uh, directly off the cow-calf enterprise. And so again, uh, majority of our operators are going to do it as a part-time uh, operation uh, with managing their cow-calf operation. Uh, so as far as kind of the, the survival of the fittest and those operators that, uh, that, that are going to be able to survive year in and year out and, and, and make some, generate some dollars from the cow-calf enterprise, uh, low-cost producers that optimize production. Uh, again, we're not necessarily talking about you've got a, the lowest input cost possible, you're going to make the most money, because that's not the case, as we'll find out as we move through the semester, especially when we're talking about nutrition. If we don't spend enough money on nutrition on these cows, they're not going to reproduce, and then ultimately you're not going to produce a calf, which generates your dollar values for the uh, cow-calf enterprise. Uh, the, the ones that survive through the, the good and the bad and the ugly, 
are those that maximize profits and also conserve their resources, take care of their forage base and the resources at hand, and also produce consumer preferred uh, products, making sure that they're producing a product that the industry wants. And maybe it could be even niche markets, possibly. And uh, we're beginning to see uh, smaller producers that are trying to make more of their income from the cow-calf enterprise uh, if they get into maybe some niche markets or diversify uh, their operations. They're, they're able to generate more dollars on a smaller area, unit area of land with that. Uh, another side or, or portion of our purebred side or of our cow-calf enterprise is the seed stock segment. And as we talked about, about 5% of our cow-calf operators are going to be purebred or seed stock. And they're going to be registered producers. And their primary goal is to make genetic improvements that can be utilized by the entire beef industry. And, and those genetics, and most common is going to be in the form of bulls, are then purchased by our, our uh, cow -calf, commercial cow-calf operators who then incorporate them into their herds uh, to either produce additional calves to go to market, that will go into the feeding industry or to produce replacements to go back into the herd. Uh, they're responsible to identify and propagate uh, high quality genetics that contribute to the profitability of our industry. Uh, with the seed stock or purebred side, uh, you may not have to be as large of an operator as far as the number of cows to be able to, to support a family uh, strictly off the cow-calf enterprise because it is a higher uh, intensity type uh, production scenario and so you're you've got more inputs you've got more labor more time commitments out of that however there's additional uh, value generated per calf uh, because of that so there's there's potential to produce more revenue per cow uh, in those purebred operations so we do see some smaller operators that are able to uh, make a living off of maybe a hundred cows uh, in the purebred side of the business there uh, some of the characteristics of our purebred breeders, again, we mentioned large investment, uh, the cattle, the genetics. You've got to start with high quality genetics up front, or you have to spend time over years to try to upgrade the genetics you have to meet the needs of the industry. Land, equipment, facilities typically are a little bit uh, more elaborate uh, because you're going to be processing those cattle more, whether it be weighing cattle or artificial insemination, embryo transfer, and so on more data management and marketing skills. Uh, it's not just as simple as taking your cattle down to the local livestock auction to market those cattle. You've got to be the marketing person now, so maybe it's advertisement. Uh, in the past, it was print ads, maybe showing cattle uh, to get those, those animals in front of people and producers to generate a name. Now it's, uh, we begin to shift gears and we see more and more cattle being marketed, purebred cattle, just strictly off of social media and reputation rather than the show ring there. But there are still some that, that do show those cattle to continue to try to market them, and that's an expense. Uh, they're uh, used to, in the past, they were, they were located near heavy beef per, uh, populations. And uh, that is a convenience factor, but, but with transportation uh, today, uh, we do see bulls at some of our larger purebred breeders that are spread out across the United States whenever they're sold. Um, you got to have some genetic selection knowledge to be able to uh, uh, select sires and animals uh, and use the latest technology. You've got to have land to grow and feed and develop cattle if you're going to be developing bulls or, or be able to or want to uh, send those bulls to maybe a test center. Honesty and integrity is, is really the foundation of the purebred operations. Uh, it's a long-term enterprise and it requires dedication. Uh, it's early on in the, the purebred operations, it's tough to uh, generate a lot of dollars because you've got that upfront expense there and cost there. Uh, again, you've got to be able to market those cattle uh, and uh, be able to work with your customers. There's a lot of customer interaction that takes place in the purebred side. Uh, at these, when you market, the point of marketing, whether it be a sale or private treaty off the ranch, but then following up because uh, there, there may be some issues where uh, you've got to make that right with that customer to make the customer happy so that they'll come back and buy additional ones. So those are just some general characteristics of the seed stock or the purebred breeder. Uh, the seed 